In this video, we're going to talk about finding the area of a spherical triangle. So what we have here is a sphere with a triangle on its surface. You can see that we have points A, B, and C, and each of those have their own angle, alpha, beta, and gamma, respectively. Then we have the center of the sphere marked by this point and it is extending to each of the points on the surface via these dotted lines. So these three green lines all have the same radius of R. Now, if we pull this triangle like off of the sphere, we can look at it a little bit closer and we'll notice that the sides are not uh, straight. So unlike a planar triangle we can't find the area using one half base times the height just because if we actually let's see if we drew like a line straight across from these we realize that there's like a lot of extra stuff going on out here so in order to find the area of this triangle we can use Girard's theorem which is the area is equal to r squared times e and e is the spherical excess um, what that means is in a spherical triangle, the sum of all the angles is in between 180 degrees and 540 degrees. So on a regular triangle, everything has to add up to 180. That's not true for a spherical triangle. Um, so to, in order to use this theorem over here, we need to figure out what the total sum of the angles are that we're given, and we need to subtract pi from it, and then we can plug that into the area formula. Um, one thing to point out, as I did here, is that this spherical excess is in radians. So if we're given degrees, we're just going to have to convert. Now let's slide over and look at an example. So find the area of a spherical triangle given that alpha is 120 degrees, beta is 70 degrees, gamma is 100 degrees, and r, the radius, is 50. So what we're going to do here is first find this spherical excess. So E is equal to alpha plus beta plus gamma minus pi. But we see that we're given all of our degree values or angle values in degrees. So what we we'll need to do is update our area equation just a little bit. We're going to have R squared times the spherical excess times this conversion factor of pi over 180. So we can still figure out E in degrees and then we'll just uh, convert it later on. So we'll plug in the values here, 120 degrees plus 70 degrees plus 100 degrees minus, and this is gonna become 180 degrees because we're using degrees. This equals 110 degrees. And now we can sub that into this part. So we're going to have 50 squared times 110 degrees times pi over 180. And if we plug this into a calculator, we get that the area is equal to 4,799.66 uh, units squared. So that's the answer to this first problem. Now what we can do is clean this up and then we'll look at another one. So in this case, we're asked to find the area of a spherical triangle given that alpha is equal to pi over two, beta is equal to two pi over three, and gamma is equal to pi over four with a radius of 10. So in this case, we're given radians for the angles. So we don't have to do any special conversion. We can just use the Girard's theorem straight up. So this is gonna be A equals R squared times the spherical excess. Now we will find the spherical excess, which again is alpha plus beta plus gamma, basically all of the angles in the triangle, minus pi. E equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 4 minus pi. Sub this into a calculator, and then E is going to be 1.31. So now, subbing it into the area formula, we're going to have 
10 squared times 1.31, and this equals 130.90 units squared. There are a few other things you can do to help you have more confidence in your answer. If you want to make sure that your the area of value that you got here is not way too large, you can basically just figure out what the surface area of the sphere is using 4 pi r squared. In our case, it's going to be 4 pi times 10 squared equals 400 pi. And then we plug this into a calculator, we get 1,256.64 units squared. So compared to the area of our triangle, obviously this triangle is going to fit on the sphere. Another thing is, um, if you're more comfortable working with degrees, you can just convert each of these radian values to degrees, which I did here already, and they all add up to 255. So now we can find the spherical excess in degrees. So we're going to have 255 degrees minus 180 and this is going to equal 75 degrees. And then we can kind of just solve this area equation again using that conversion factor. So r squared times e times pi over 180. This is going to be 100 times 75 degrees over times pi over 180 degrees. And I haven't actually done this yet, so we're going to do it together. 100 times 75 times pi divided by 180 and this gives us 130.9 so same thing um, just a way to double check what you got